Why did the XRP investors file a class action lawsuit against Coinbase? Keep watching this video to find out more so that you don't miss out on an excellent opportunity to win a giveaway of 300 XRP tokens at the end of this month. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiteboard Crypto Update, the best spot for your daily dose of everything XRP and cryptocurrency. In today's video, we will talk about XRP's future, so be sure to stay focused as you surely don't want to miss out on this. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. Please remember this is not a financial advice video. Apart from the court battle between Ripple and the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the airdrop of the Flare Network token has caused quite a stir in the XRP community in recent weeks. After more than two years, XRP holders finally received their FLR tokens on January 9th, even if not completely as hoped, as Bitcoinists reported. The most renowned exchanges like Binance and Kraken have supported the distribution of the airdrop, though there is one exception, Coinbase. The American exchange has not distributed the FLT to its users. But the XRP community around lawyer Frederick Rispoli does not accept this and has brought a class action lawsuit against Coinbase and its CEO Brian Armstrong. Lead plaintiff Dallas Woody is represented by the law firm Hoddle Law, which, led by Rispoli, filed the lawsuit yesterday in United States District Court. Hoddle Law's Twitter account posted this, a crypto company can't steal customer funds, that's business law 101. Even after FTX, some exchanges still haven't got the message. Because they weren't being held to account, that's over, Coinbase, return customers SGB and FLR, with damages, now. We have filed a class action lawsuit against Coinbase for its failure to provide their customers with Songbird and Flare tokens that Coinbase publicly affirmed it would distribute, no more excuses. The complaint alleges that the crypto exchange publicly agreed to distribute the airdrop among XRP holders. Coinbase's repeated and public assertions have caused XRP holders to additionally purchase XRP from the exchange, hold it in the defendant's custody, and or transfer XRP from other wallets into the defendant's custody, according to the complaint. Based on the infringement, the plaintiffs assert civil claims against Coinbase for breach of fiduciary duty, fraud intentional misrepresentation, negligent misrepresentation, constructive fraud, conversion, common count, negligence, violation of unfair competition law, and request for declaratory relief. Also part of the lawsuit are the Songbird tokens, which were distributed as part of the airdrop from the Flare Network in September 2021 as a precursor to the FLR distribution. As a result of Coinbase's unlawful actions with respect to SGB and FLR, HODL law, on behalf of the proposed class of all Coinbase customers with XRP accounts, seeks a declaration that the XRP holders are the rightful owners of SGB and FLR that Coinbase received and did not distribute. In addition, Rispoli seeks damages for losses incurred as a result of defendants' unlawful conversion of plaintiffs' SGB and FLR. This claim is also asserted against Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong for having the power and authority to direct the management and activities of Coinbase and its employees and to cause Coinbase to distribute the tokens. Defendant Armstrong had consistent and daily management of operations of Coinbase, including the decision to accept all SGB and FLR from the Flare airdrop on behalf of his customers. Armstrong purposefully exercised his power and influence to cause Coinbase to engage in the wrongful conduct described. Furthermore, Ripple CTO David Schwartz seems not to be so pleased with the Flare governance proposal FIP1 which, if passed, would consist of a set of changes that would impact the distribution and inflation of the Flare blockchain's native token. He cites two reasons. The first is that it gives XRP holders only 15% of what they were promised. Second, it builds in a lot of monetary expansion that does not seem to benefit anyone. The remaining 85% will be allocated over 36 months. Over the weekend, Flare Network announced that the threshold for the vote on FIP1 had been reached. Hugo Fillion, CEO of Flare, highlighted one of FIP1's demerits for its 2020 snapshot participants, FLR must be wrapped to receive full and final distribution. Also, depending on participation, users may end up with less than expected under the 2020 snapshot. However, the advantages include removing the risk associated with relying on exchanges. As reported earlier, David Schwartz criticized the Flare airdrop, 
claiming that there was no reason to hold FLR tokens and wait to get additional airdrops under the present conditions. He claims that the new rules represent a very strange decision, implying that Flare simply leveraged the XRP community as a growth tool before eroding its commitment. Now, our main topic of the day. In the wake of the implosion of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, one urgent question keeps resurfacing on everyone's mind. Who should regulate the industry? Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. An upcoming ruling in New York federal court could help determine the answer, along with the fates of numerous crypto investors and companies. The case hinges on whether a prominent digital token should be treated as a security, which would fall under the Securities and Exchange Commission's jurisdiction. The dispute dates back to 2020, when the SEC accused San Francisco-based Ripple Labs Inc. of selling unregistered digital tokens without adequate disclosure. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler has been working to position his agency as the force that would reign in the crypto industry and should the regulator prevail it would strengthen its grip at a crucial moment. A decision could come in the first half of 2023. Among a handful of closely watched fintech lawsuits, the Ripple decision is the most high profile, its digital token. XRP is the sixth largest crypto token with a market value of almost $20 billion, according to CoinMarketCap. The recent turmoil in crypto markets could taint the court's view, said Joseph Hall a partner at Davis Polk and Wardwell who worked at the SEC from 2003 to 2005. You just have to imagine that the judges will be influenced by the investor losses they've seen, Hall said. And the SEC will make clear to them that if you rule the other way, we will not have the tools that we need to fight this kind of activity. FTX's bankruptcy in November left customers and investors facing billions of dollars of potential losses and several of the company's executives have been charged with various types of financial fraud. Before his arrest, FTX's founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, was a prominent voice in the policy debate around regulation. He formed close ties with U.S. legislators and advocated for a bill to give the Commodity Futures Trading Commission oversight of certain tokens a move some saw as an attempt to wrest jurisdiction away from the SEC. The fallout from FTX's implosion was swift and devastating, pounding an industry that had already had a rough year. Token prices plummeted, deepening a route that began last April. Several crypto firms filed for bankruptcy, and high-profile backers of FTX were forced to write investments down to zero. The potential contagion effects of crypto collapses are now more apparent, said Howard Fisher, a partner at Moses and Singer and former senior trial counsel at the SEC. The FTX disaster will be more of a touchstone in inspiring government regulation. For an asset to be classed as a security it must meet a legal standard from a 1946 U.S. Supreme Court ruling about the sale of tracts of Florida citrus groves to investors. The test is met if investors kick in money with the expectation of profiting from the efforts of an organization's leadership. Ripple has contended that XRP doesn't meet that test because sales took place in the secondary market and there was no pooling of profits. Selling an asset on a secondary market is most akin to a commodity and should be regulated as such, the company's general counsel, Stuart Alderati, said in an interview. You don't lose consumer protection and you keep bad actors out. Regulation needs to be done in a way that respects the reality of what an asset is. An SEC spokesperson declined to comment on the Ripple suit. Trading in digital asset commodities, which U.S. regulators have largely agreed includes Bitcoin, is subject to a patchwork of state regulation but not federal oversight. Some policymakers have sought to rectify that through legislation to give the CFTC authority over those types of tokens. But if the Ripple ruling determines that XRP is a security, it would give the SEC ammunition to claim jurisdiction over the majority of digital assets, said Carol Goforth, a professor at the University of Arkansas School of Law who specializes in fintech regulation. Gensler has slapped multi-million dollar fines on crypto companies and those who promote digital assets. The SEC, however, hasn't produced specific guidance for when a digital token amounts to a security, and Gensler has said existing rules are clear. He's faced criticism from crypto industry insiders over the approach, which they say relies on enforcement instead of clarifying rules. In its latest salvo, the SEC on Jam. 12 sued crypto firms Genesis Global Capital and Gemini Trust Co. 
for raising billions of dollars worth of crypto assets from investors through a program that it said amounted to an offering of unregistered securities. Instead of engaging in transparent and public rulemaking, with industry comments, the SEC has chosen to mark its digital asset territory via the federal court system, said Arthur Jacoby. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. What are your thoughts on XRP? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, then be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any new future videos then be sure to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification under this video, so that you're notified the next time we upload a video on the latest XRP and cryptocurrency news. Until the next video comes out, you can watch our other videos about XRP or other cryptocurrencies. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again in the next video goodbye.